one of the things that's important to know is if you start to embody regenerative practices, what you're actually doing is becoming more healthy. And um, that's because regeneration is a feature of living things. Living things, kind of the definition of being alive is for some dynamic process to keep regenerating the conditions for it to continue living. And so the moment-to-moment existence of life is the phenomenon of regeneration. And so when we understand how deeply that, uh, that is true, when the, as we understand that depth, we start to see that um, when we begin to do regenerative things, our health improves, our stress levels go down, our ability to discern increases, and our ability to take effective actions goes up. So like um, right now, one of our big problems is we have all of these debt-based currencies and we have a global financial system based on servicing debt. So if more of us definancialize our lives, stop paying the debts, walk away from it, stop trying to earn money because all money is debt in the current system. Instead, use alternative currencies. And when the current system becomes dysfunctional, set up alternative currencies. This is the real beauty of blockchain, hollow chain, uh, digitally autonomous organizations, and all this this whole conversation around token economies. It's a big conversation happening right now about different ways of accounting for and measuring and validating value within a system. All these things that will let us just walk away from the disaster that is the current financial system and do something else instead. And so... Um, If a group of people is feeling the strain of the pathological economy, which is just all about extraction, that's why it's pathological, it's all about extraction, and instead begin to set up value exchanges within their local web of relationships, and they track those value exchanges in any way other than uh, fiat currency, then they are using an alternative currency. So you can do it with time banking and say, I give an hour of time, you give an hour of time. They can do it with bartering, with actual objects being the things of value. You know, they can do it in various ways. But as long as they are not using debt-based money, they're actually moving themselves closer to resilience. And so um, this is a really powerful thing that most of us don't realize is we can choose not to use debt-based money. We can just choose at any time and just declare it invalid. But one of the reasons that we don't do this is because we don't know how to imagine or take concrete actions if we don't have money. Most of us have to have money because the only way we get food is to buy it at a store and they accept money. So until you can work out an agreement with the grocer to give you produce or give you food without giving them money, then you're like, I have to have money. And the need for it feels real. But it's actually forced artificial It's a forced artificial environment to make it feel real so it becomes real. And so if instead, like where I'm living now, there is uh, livestock, you know, cattle, pigs, and horses, and chickens. Horses are really for the tourists, but the cattle, the pigs, and the chickens are for making food. Uh, There's also a lot of organic um, gardening and regenerative agriculture that's happening. So where I'm living I don't have to pay for the food because the food is just part of the production system of where I live. If I'm doing something valuable for the community here, then other people who are working in the food production part of it are benefiting from whatever I bring. And so they're happy to just keep producing food and I get to eat some of it. And so I don't have to pay them any money for that. And so if we can build these these closed loops of value creation, we create value in different relationships, but they form loops with each other, where there's nothing being extracted, it's always being recirculated, then we get to one of the principles of regenerative economics, which is robust circulation. Robust circulation is like the circulation of blood in your body. If value creation in the economy is circulating like the blood in your body does, then every piece of cell tissue in your body gets nutrition, or in the economy, every person who's in the economy gets their needs met. So the more we engage in regenerative practices, the healthier we become. This is a really important lesson because as more of us start doing this, 
our neighbors are going to notice when they have hardships, they'll start coming to us because we're the ones who can still help them. You know, if you need food and the only person who has food is the farmer doing regenerative farming, then you go and say, could I get some eggs? I really need some help. And that farmer might say, well, I actually need some help with the harvest. Could you come help in the field? And now you're having a meaningful exchange that doesn't involve money. And so, you know, we tend to fall back to agricultural examples because they're so important and they're so easy to visualize. But the lesson is that this applies to anything in the economy. And so we need to build those relationships of trust and value exchange so that there is robust circulation, which means we have a healthy set of relationships in a healthy community. And this is one of the things that needs to be taught. And then also for people to practice it and experience it so they really learn it. 